This meeting is called to order in accordance with the open public meetings law. This meeting of June 6, 2022 was included in the list of meetings published in the Curry News and Star Ledger. Notice of this meeting was placed on the bulletin board of our wall. In addition, a copy of this notice is available to the public and a copy of the statement shall be included in the minutes of this meeting. Mayor Dennis Sullivan. Here. Council members, Randall Brady. Here. Tom Mitchell. Here. Gina Stravick. Here. Roger Broom. Here. Fred Weed. Here. Randy Pitts. Here. Please stand and join me in the flag stick. Remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to open our uh, meeting tonight with a moment of silence for Louis Jean Moretti. Jean uh, was probably our oldest resident at 105 years old, World War II veteran, personal friend of mine for about 30 years. I recognized him at the Memorial Day service uh, last Monday, which was the very fittingly the day of his wake. Um, I never knew his name was Lewis. I always knew his gene. And anyone that knew him knew that he was, uh, he had a great heart, a great love for this country, and a great love for our community. So I'd like to offer a moment of silence for Louis Jean Murray. Thank you. <laughs> Kevin, we have a set of minutes for May 16th. Correct. Any motion? Someone? Second. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Broome? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. The only department report we have is about election day tomorrow. And no need to comment tonight because by the time this airs or goes online, election day will be done. Oh, that's we are live streaming. We are live. Well, then, okay. If you don't know, tomorrow's election day. Polls open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, at the traditional polling places. If you've not voted yet, please exercise your most important citizen right. All right. We have a very nice special recognition today. Let me give a little background. Uh, every year, the New Jersey League of Municipalities sponsors the Lewis Bay's second Future Municipal Leaders Scholarship Competition. It's open to any junior or senior in a New Jersey high school. Students are encouraged to write an original essay on the topic, uh, what my municipal government does well. Uh, each year, each mayor of each municipality is allowed to submit one winning entry from these submissions. I solicited submissions both from Immaculata High School and from Somerville High School. Uh, after reading the essays, uh, I chose essay written by Ms. Bridget Lucerta, who is a junior, I believe, at Somerville High School. And um, although she didn't make the final three, which means she didn't get the big scholarship award, she is a state finalist, which means there were three people ahead of her. And the next group of 11, she's one of them. So her essay was in the top 14 in the state. And at this point, it's my pleasure to call Bridget Lucerta up to uh, give her reading of her to me prize winning essay. Bridget, please come up. Something that does not care about the lives of those it governs. 
It is seen as some tyrannical force, one that does not take in the opinions of the average person, or does not stop to wonder if all people like the rules and regulations that are being passed. In being a resident of Somerville, I have learned that this ideology could not be farther from the truth when it comes to some rules of municipal government. What I believe the municipal government of Somerville does best is build a community. You can have a town, you can have people living side by side, but what the government truly brings is collectiveness. A sense of belonging, a common community united as one. A community where all ideas are valued and all voices are heard. There are many instances where Somerville has showcased their sense of community. The bold orange and black face paint and merchandise worn to all football games and sporting events hosted by the Somerville Recreation Department. Coming together after the tragic events of Hurricane Ida, where their municipal government so generously set up donations for those in need, shelters for those who had nowhere to turn to, and most importantly, bringing their own passion for the community. While volunteering, I saw firsthand many Somerville leaders step up, placing clothing and personal items in bags, distracting children while their parents picked up what little of their belongings they had left, and handing out food to those who had just lost everything in the flood. A majority of the people there were from the Somerville Municipal Government, no matter what branch, showing how much they truly and deeply cared about the lives of those who live in Somerville. In addition, the Somerville Municipal Government is open to any opinion or idea. I have stepped in front of the Borough Council many times and have seen countless others do the same. Whether it be about building something new, upcoming events or sports games, clean up around the town, or even a complaint, the Borough Council always listens attentively. When I have gone up to present projects for Girl Scouts, they do not view me as merely a teenager who should quickly be dismissed. Instead, they view me as a person with a unique perspective and one that should be listened to no matter what age that they are. I have seen, I have seen countless Scouts, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, go up to present projects and ideas. I have presented my Bronze Award, Silver Award, and even Gold Award, and every time they have treated me with the same level of respect and care as they would any other citizen. The Borough Council truly values every idea from adults and youth alike. They want to spark change and help young, passionate people change the community for better with their projects. The Borough Council fosters the helping hands of adolescents, which in turn makes for a generation of compassionate adults. The Somerville Municipal Government has taught me that a government should not only instill order, but should foster a loving environment and a beautifully and truly connected community. The Somerville Municipal Go Government elevates the lives in Somerville as it turns a small town into an empathetic, caring, and overall truly connected community. I did not read the three final winners, but if they're anything like that, I mean, Bridget. First of all, I want to thank you for participating. I have a certificate presented on behalf of the New Jersey League of Municipalities, certificate of participation presented to Bridget the Service, Somerville Borough State Finalist. For your interest in civic contributions to the community is evidenced by your participation. 28th Annual Lewis Bay Second Future Municipal Leaders Scholarship Competition awarded May the 6th, 2022, signed by President Bill Philippe Podevsky, New Jersey League of Municipalities. Congratulations on this year's award. That's from the League. From myself, this ornament was presented in, in the Somerville Centennial in 2009 miniature replica of Borough Hall. It's a lot shinier and, and neater than Borough Hall is right now, but we're working on a grant to restore the facade. So I would like you to display this proudly, and I look forward to your essay next year because you're going to be eligible as a senior. So you've got, you've got a tough act to follow this year. I welcome your participation next year. Ms. Bridget the sir. Not by accident, I asked her to read that speech from this chair because it would not surprise me when she's finished with high school and college that she will, uh, as Councilman Reed has done, return to this community and uh, continue to contribute. So, well done. Thank you.
Mom, congratulations. Thank you. you, you you've done a great job so far, and, and I know I know we're going to see her again. Richard, again, thank you. you. You're welcome to stay, but you probably have more work to do. <laughs> and I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right. Take care. All right. Committee reports. We'll start with uh, Councilman Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. The, co the county preservation grant for Borough Hall has been approved. An additional grant request has been submitted electronically to the New Jersey Historic Trust and is being reviewed. These grant funds will help cover the cost of restoration of the east elevation of the building, as well as masonry repairs and remaining window restorations on the remaining elevations. HMR, the architect, is producing the designs for the east elevation work for review by SHPO, that's the State Historic Preservation Office. HMR believes there's 10 more years of life left in the Borough Hall roof. Repairs are needed for the area of the roof between the library and Borough Hall. The Historic Advisory Committee plans to have a booth at the Flag Day Festival in front of the courthouse on Friday the 17th from 5 to 8 p.m. They plan to give out copies of History at Home, Stories of Somerville, booklet produced for, for school children. They also plan to have a display about local Native American history. An EV charging station <coughs> for charging electric cars is to be installed at the Burrow Hall parking lot. This project is funded by a county grant and will provide electric charging for municipal vehicles and public access through credit card payments. The Historic Advisory Committee recommends not changing the borough flag. The borough flag was selected from a design contest in 1974. The designer was a retired Pan Am pilot, Captain Raymond Young, Jr., whose major claim to, frame, to, claim to fame was that he was the pilot on the Pan Am flight that brought the Beatles to the United States on their first American tour. Heritage Trail has taken over the Revolutionary Spirit Night at the ballpark on June 25th. Heritage Trail benefits directly from the ticket sales and there will be displays, fun activities, and fireworks. Discounted tickets of $10 are available through the Heritage Trail website, heritagetrail.org. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman uh, so I have uh, the SEF, the Somerville Education Foundation. Uh, they have star awards that they that they uh, give out, and uh, I have the list of star recipients for the 2021-22 year. Star is the Staff Teacher Appreciation and Recognition Program. It's a way for the community members to say thank you to the teachers or support staff members in the Somerville School District. Students and their families have nominated all the individuals on this year's award list. They are recognized for their contribution not only to the town and, and, uh, but also the school uh, during the 21 22 school year. Uh, the SEF is a volunteer organization that was founded in 1998 that funds creative and innovative educational programs for students in the Somerville School District. Uh, so the first set of recipients are from Vanderveer, Ms. Domingo, Ms. Siora, Mr. George Fazio, who everyone knows as captain, Mrs. Stacy Delise, Mrs. Stacy Tuminello. Ms. Paige Agnello, Ms. Andrea Domingo, Mr. Reedy, Ms. Kessler, Mrs. Cohen, Mrs. Garrett, Mrs. Petrill, Ms. Allard. Uh, at Somerville High School, we have Ian Pace, who's a substitute, Ida Janet Guava, Dana Morocco, Constantine Margos, Cody Mack, Sarah Liguri, Timothy Corrigan, Steve Bucignano, Deborah Grossmith, uh, Joseph D'Alessandro, Justine Volante, Jennifer Stafford, Angela Flaker, David Dimash, Tyler Volpe. Uh, staff members have already, been rece have already received uh, their certificates from their principals, uh, but again, they were nominated by the community, by the community uh, which 
which is always nice to see. The Flood Advisory, uh, Advisory Committee met uh, just this past week, and we have uh, the very uh, close to presenting an updated version of the um, ordinances that we were tasked with taking a look at. Um, we're probably going to meet again on the 23rd of this month to just finalize a few things, um, but we came to an agreement at the last meeting. Uh, all of the members of the committee mostly in agreement to go forth with the new plan that we have. Uh, and we look forward to bringing that to council soon. And we are actually in the final stages as far as the fire department goes, in the final, final stages of the uh, selection and uh, uh, awarding a contract. Again, we have to take a look, still looking at it, uh, for a new Fire Engine 1, which was uh, being replaced after Ida, uh, but also was going to need to be replaced uh, as we saw it anyways due to the, the age of the machine. So we have a new engine uh, with a proposal that came from the, uh, the fire department had a committee to come up with what they wanted in the engine. Uh, so that has been sent to, uh, to us here at the, at the council to Kevin and myself to look over. And we look forward to having that conversation and uh, looking forward to welcoming a new apparatus uh, to the borough uh, for our wonderful volunteers that uh, keep us safe every day. Thank you. Uh, make sure Kevin gets the list of those. <clears throat> I'm sure they'll be recognized. There's a teacher's luncheon on Friday, which I plan to attend, but we can put that on our website as well. Sure. Dr. Bray. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, on the report at the last uh, planning board meeting, our planner announced that the Bridgewater Planning Board is preparing to hear an application from Amazon to build a large warehouse on Route 22, east of the old back building. This could have an impact on the borough since there's a strong likelihood that 18 wheelers would be using our roads to access that warehouse. I would like us to look at the streets that are adjacent to and have direct access to Route 22 and consider placing weight limits on those streets Bridgewater already has a weight limit of, uh, on Adamsville Road, and we really don't want 10-ton uh, trucks tearing up our roads to get to the warehouse. Some residents on Lisa Terrace have requested information about the upcoming pavement project there. We announced that the job will be done sometime this summer. Now, since summer doesn't start until June 21st, there may be some jumping the gun on this issue. And I want to assure everyone that the borough will contact residents when there is a road pavement job being considered or being scheduled. And Kevin, perhaps we could contact the hospital to see if they could we could park in their open lot during construction because we've got Lisa, Lori, Lee, and Reimer all being worked on. A lot of cars there, and if we can't get the hospital lot, maybe we can waive the prohibition on parking on Meadville Avenue. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Council Luke. So, uh, my report is regarding the Environmental Commission. Um, there is a most enthusiastic group of subcommittee of the Environmental Commission who has brought this dream of theirs to reality. Uh, the, um, Community garden established behind Fireman's, uh, Fireman's Field Firehouse um, is uh, uh, almost complete. There's a shed to put up, so uh, if anyone uh, has some talent to clean up a metal shed, they can use a little help with that. But other than that, uh, the first bed has been planted, and um, there's a little more cosmetic and additional plants uh, to be done. But they received a $2,000 grant from Sustainable New Jersey, which will approve tonight, and then also a $750 grant from the Garden Club of Somerset County. So um, those two grants uh, are, are enabling a little more things to get, get done around the, the gardens, but it's small, but mighty and with a lot of love. So um, uh, everyone's welcome to, uh, to go down there. Eventually we'll be having an event um, and a, a, memor a memorial to, uh, a, a, as well as I think it's a naming, a naming event for uh, uh, Jay Scott. So, uh, so that's uh, the community gardens. Uh, the Environmental Commission is also in the process of, of Kevin of applying for a New Jersey Community Forestry Grant. Uh, the grant will, uh, if, if successfully uh, received, would provide us with somewhere around $150,000 towards uh, street trees and park trees. 
um, which could be huge. Um, and then lastly, the um, Wells House is, um, un is, is going a, under a archaeological dig to see if we can plant the 500 year old seedling of the, of the Salem Oak. So we're waiting for the results of that, and then we can plant our Salem Oak at the Wallace House. Councilman Lee. I guess, thank you. Um, first, I gotta say, there were quite a few teachers' uh, names I recognize there. Mr. Reeby, who I believe is the principal uh, there? Yes. Yeah, he, uh, I think I had him his first year teaching uh, seventh grade math. Uh, so he's, he's, he's done a good job. I'm sure he remembers you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I still... I, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, in recreation, Carol Pedro Field is current, uh, currently... There's a multitude of work being done there. Um, the parking lot, uh, basketball court, um, and the field itself. So there's a whole bunch of work uh, in the process of being done. Hopefully it will uh, be done soon. Uh, the running club, uh, the time has been changed from 10 a.m. on Saturdays to 8 a.m. on Saturdays uh, to try and beat the heat. Uh, and that is at Firehouse Field every Saturday. And then it's uh, 6 p.m. every Wednesday night if you can't attend that. Uh, the borough is opening Walk Park Pool uh, only this summer. That tentative dates of operation are June 18th to August 21st from 12 to 6 p.m. Uh, it is subject to change, and uh, it is, of course, with the, our pools, residents only. Uh, and badges can be picked up at Walk Park during the first visit. Um, finally, the, may, uh, the mayor had mentioned uh, primary day. So now um, it's a little too late for early voting, but if you do early vote, you know, no more stickers, but this is the stylus to sign in on. Uh, so, yeah. So you get to keep the stylus uh, to sign in on. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, make sure and get out and vote uh, tomorrow. Uh, and finally, uh, I know the mayor will uh, read a proclamation in a little bit, so I'll uh, keep my remarks uh, fairly short. Uh, June is LGBTQ Pride Month. Uh, it is very important that we recognize this. Uh, you know, not just um, for those of us who have family members who are LGBTQ like my own, uh, but also um, the struggle and. You know, it, it wasn't too long ago uh, that, you know, LGBT um, being openly gay or um, transsexual is considered a psychological disorder. Uh, so, you know, there, we can't go back and this is why we recognize it and the reason why we recognize it, the reason why we uh, display the pride flag, uh, which we will be doing uh, in downtown Somerville this month. Uh, is, you know, the American flag did not truly represent um, those LGBTQ people for many, many uh, generations. So it's, it's very important uh, that we do that. And that's all I have here. Right. Thank you. Mr. President. Your uh, <clears throat> Honor, I have to give a report. Okay. I have Mr. several. Uh, as Fred mentioned, uh, June is LGBTQ Pride Month. Uh, uh, the honor of presenting this proclamation, Kevin, also I've signed and pass it on to you. I'll read the first and last paragraphs. Whereas our nation was founded on the principle of equal rights for all people, but the fulfillment of this promise has been long forthcoming for many Americans, and some of the most inspiring moments in our history have arisen through the various civil rights movements that have brought one group after another from the margins to the mainstream of American society. Now, therefore, be resolved that I, Dennis Sullivan, named the borough of Somerville County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, Join with the Somerville Borough Council to proclaim June 2022 as LGBT Pride Month in the borough of Somerville and urge all residents to respect and honor our diverse community and build a culture of inclusiveness and acceptance. We'll be celebrating um, Juneteenth uh, with a county function later on this month. And, um, you know, the Declaration of Independence was... <clears throat> You know, signed in 1776. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed on January 1st, 1863. Uh, Juneteenth didn't happen until three years later. And in some parts of the country and some parts of the world, those promises are still unkept. Uh, Kevin, make sure this is displayed prominently, uh, you know, in, in the world. 
Right. As uh, Councilman Straub had mentioned, the Salem Oak uh, Seedling has had a long history over the past year. Uh, it is in town. A member of the Environmental Commission is, is taking very good care of it while the state um, does the archaeological study as to where to dig the hole on the Wallace House property. Um, we're closer than ever. Um, the, the, the expert has been hired. It's just a question now of him being on site, dig, you know, digging a test hole, examining it for artifacts. Hopefully all we'll find are tree roots and worms and grubs, and we can plant the seedling. Uh, Gina, there's a possibility that there will be more than one seedling available. So could, could you, maybe Kevin, you could reach out to the, the state forestry division, whoever's the shepherd of the seedlings, it's my understanding that there may be more than one available. And um, why not get a few more? Yep. You know, we'll check into that. There's no guarantee it'll, it'll survive, but I'm hoping it will. And if other towns don't want them, we love trees. Yep. And right. we'll wait till fall because summer's not oh, time. Oh, yeah, no, this will be good. All right, a um, couple more recognitions. Um, I was pleased to read in today's paper uh, the Central Jersey 2022 Academic All Stars. And I would like to acknowledge Ms. Hannah Shahinian from Somerville High School. I'll just read a, a, a snapshot of her involvement. Marching Band, Model UN, Club President, Youth in Government, Indoor Percussion, Jazz Band, Jazz Combo, National Honor Society. 4-H, Chamber Choir, Girl Scouts, and on, and on, and on. I had the, uh, the pleasure to attend the High School Honor Society induction about two weeks ago. And this, uh, this very evening, uh, I attended uh, the Middle School Honor Society induction. Um, folks, the, the, the future of this town is, you know, exemplified by our youth is in good hands. I would personally like to congratulate uh, Mr. Broom and his wife on having Nathan, their 14-year-old son, inducted into the National Honor Society for Somerville Middle School. Congratulations, uh, Broom family. Um, being a parent's the best job in the world and the hardest job in the world at the same time. So uh, as, as mayor, but more importantly as a friend who's known Nathan for, you know, since kindergarten, well done, well done. Last recognition I have for tonight, um, gentlemen to my immediate, uh, my far right, uh, Mr. Kevin Sluka, our clerk. Uh, the General Code is a national and international society um, that recognizes uh, municipal clerks uh, throughout the world and specifically throughout the country. It was my pleasure to nominate Mr. Sluka several months ago, and I just received notification the other day that he has been accepted into their honor society for the third consecutive year. Kevin, I hope you've received that, I did. Uh, that Thank uh, paperwork. It was my pleasure to nominate you. Um, you do more than clerk. And um, evidently the people that read my nomination uh, agree with me. So for the third consecutive year, our, our general code <coughs> work, uh, along with about 50 or 60 other clerks in the state of New Jersey, but three-time winner Kevin Sluka. Kevin, welcome. <laughs> drive by Bar Hall all night and you see the light on, it's, it's usually Kevin. Either that or you forgot to turn the light up when you left. <laughs> but I, I think those of you that know Kevin's work, I think, uh, know that it's well deserved and I, I look forward to the opportunity to nominate him again uh, next year. Lastly, uh, council people, if you would please thank anyone in your various committees that had a small but important part in the bike race festivities for this past week. It was, um, you know, three years since the last one. It looked like a good crowd. It looked like people were having fun. It looked like everyone was safe. Um, again, I've said before, the public only sees the tip of the iceberg. They don't see the thousands of hours that go into a one hour presentation. This was an all day affair. It required a lot of, a lot of different components from recreation to police, to public works, to DSA. So. It, you represent anyone who was part of that, please extend my thanks. Uh, it's good to know that we, you know, can shake off the rust and, and, and do it once again and look forward to, um, you know, an active, safe summer. Uh, 
building upon the success we've had so far. Your Honor. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to mention that 77 years ago today, your father, my father, and many other people stormed Normandy Beach. This is D-Day. And I was, the only, my notes, Mr. Brady, and I was the only one alive <laughs> on that day. I have to admit, I wasn't conscious, or maybe I was, but I was the only one. I was alive on D-Day as a baby, and it was a very tough time for GIs that didn't come home right away. Everybody thinks that people came home after the war. They stayed for at least a year afterwards to keep things going. So it's a really important consideration when you think about what's going on in the world today. D-Day was a, a historic day in our, in our country. And on a personal note, Mr. James Derlin, who's taught history at Somerville High School for many years, was a good friend and colleague of mine. His father uh, was at E-Day. And, and Jim has um, a very fuzzy picture in, in his archives of his dad's unit storming, I, I don't remember exactly which beach it was. He may have one of them, but it's, it's a personal connection. And it, was, it, was, it was a watershed moment in the history of the world. And adoption tonight, some departments specifically including appropriation and background checks. So, so second. Council members, Granville Brady. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Ordinance 2673. Hearing none, I'll have a motion to close. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Andy Phipps. Yes. yes. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Go. Oh. Council members Granville Brady. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Andy Phipps. Yes. Now I need a motion to open public hearing on 2674. Amending Ordinance 2627, establishing salary range for employee titles to be paid to certain officers and employees of the borough of Somerville. So moved. Second. Council Members Granville Brady. Yes. Tom Mitchell. Yes. Gina Stravick. Yes. Roger Broom. Yes. Fred Weed. Yes. Randy Phipps. Yes. Public hearing on this ordinance. Hearing none, motion to close. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady, yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Gina Stravick, yes. Roger Broom, yes. Fred Weed, yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Motion for adoption. So moved. Second. Council members Granville Brady, yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Gina Stravick, yes. Roger Broom, yes. Fred Weed, yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. All right. I need a motion to open public. So moved. Second. Second. Council members Granville Brady, yes. Tom Mitchell, yes. Gina Stravick, yes. Roger Broome, yes. Fred Weed, yes. Randy Pitts. Yes. Public portion open. If you have comments, questions, so please come to the microphone, identify yourself, name and address for the record. Jack Hoffman, 23 North Lawton Ave. It's been 78 years, by the way, 1944. You're right. 77. Right. Um, and um, I wanted to mention that too. So I have my shirt on to so uh, to celebrate or to honor those that serve. I live in a victory home actually, uh, actually of a Joseph Miano that served in the Navy during World War II. Um, we're uh, third generation in that home. Um, so I wish I could have good things to say about that, but I really don't at this point. That's why I'm here. Um, so I would like to, um, I know I have to direct things to the mayor. Um, I want to just uh, comp compliment because I got a list of beats here. Uh, Ms. Stravick, I seen you when you first came on, on to the council and all, and I, I kind of admired how you questioned the, um, the uh, payroll on a parking utility and uh, why it's so high and all, and you voted no on it and stuff, I, I, as I recall. My question though is, Okay, I believe it's like 180,000. Where does the 500,000 other go? Where does that go into the black hole of the Somerville slush fund? I mean, that, before the utility was formed, that was, um, um, you know, went into the general fund, but the utility was formed. Mr. And now, where does that half a million dollars go? I'll, I'll briefly answer that question. I'm just reminding you before we get into a long discussion about the time limit. 
So okay, so yeah, okay, point, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll watch out yeah, for that. If you make your point, we'll try to address it. Okay, where does the five hundred thousand go? The, the parking utility is a closed system. I know what it is. Where does the five hundred thousand go? Revenue goes out. And Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. They're on payroll. Payroll's one hundred eighty five hundred thousand is other. Have, where does it go? We have capital. If we if we bond for improvements, we're right now working on lot one A, um, eight A. Oh, one A, I'm sorry, one A, the new lot off of High Street. That you've paid a million way. dollars to park 80 cars for two thirds of an acre, that one, that you bonded through the county, that lot? That's an expense that comes, that's parking related. Yeah, yeah, related. okay, okay. It's parking related, it right. comes out of the parking unit. Okay, day. well, all I want to know is where does the, how, why does it just say other? Why doesn't it say where it goes? I, I don't have the line items in front of me. Okay, well, that's what it says. 500,000 just goes to other. You have specific questions? No, I have one more specific question. Okay. Why did the borough of Somerville, taxpayers of Somerville, bond for a private developer's parking deck? Why didn't the parking utility bond for a parking deck? What deck are you referring to? You know what deck I'm talking about. The deck on Main Street that was built for Mr. Morris with $7 million of taxpayer money. That, money that has private parking on the Dowdy side. Right. So okay. I help pay for a multi-million dollar, a multi-millionaire's parking deck. There is public money in that project. Seven million dollars. Yes. That was yes. The Which, money. by your own words, we pay back three times as much. So that's $21 million. Awesome. Yeah, okay. So that's great. That's great. I, I'm sure the people of Somerville appreciate that. Now. While, while you're answering questions on money, I know my time is short. What is the final number on this public emergency building? It's a 40 year note that starts out at 31 and a half. What's the end game? 100 million, 90 million, what is it? There are monthly leases. What is the final amount that that's going to cost the taxpayers can you just answer the question not specific dollars i will let you call borough hall tomorrow where we can get that exact money for you i don't have the spreadsheet in front of us well by your own words it's three times the amount so i'll take over 90 million dollars it's going to cost taxpayers for that building okay all right well now i'm why i'm really here some of you were here i don't try to be as brief as possible um i would you most of you were here when I was here about three years ago, talking about Somerville's lack of storm water management. But it's even worse than that. How do, and I know it's illegal. I know no public official has the right to tell a builder or a private homeowner that they have the right to drain their storm water onto another property. And why does this go on in this town? Why does your code enforcers go around and allow buildings? A new house was built on North Richards between Adams and Maine six, seven years ago. Went through all the permits, all of that. Some pool guy built it. They were allowed to take all the water from that property and to pump it to the neighbors in the back. Now, when the homeowner, a new homeowner bought, bought the property, it's on its second owner now. When a homeowner behind it was doing some yard work back there, he found this pipe. The town stood by that, from what the young man told me. And what was the fix? They put a T on it and shot it to two properties. Because it was right by two properties. This was the fix. I want to talk to the people because I noticed two weeks ago, I saw a three inch pipe go out to the street. So they must be decent people because the town allows people to pump their storm water onto other people's property. That's why I am here. When I came here three years ago, when you passed the ordinance about the no more than three yards of topsoil, uh, people can't put in three yards of soil because of the, um, the cause runoff into a neighbor's property. I explained before that ordinance that I, with my property is sloped uh, two ways. Two, towards my house, two ways, okay? I put up a fence, I put I put a berm, a little levee around the whole property so I wouldn't get everybody's runoff, okay? All right, I did that prior to this ordinance and all. So now here's my problem, when I was here, I, I explained that 
the house next door to me has five leader pipes within two to three feet aiming at my property. Okay. Are you experiencing runoff from that property? Okay, can I finish? Yes, I am. I'm, no, no, it gets better. May I finish? I know I'm, I'm, I'm on a deadline here because there's a line of people. No, I will allow okay. you to finish. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm just did this last, I'm, I'm working on it, okay? So I have five liters pointing at my property. I bought this up. And I had to put dirt on my property to try to protect it, okay? That's why I did it because Somerville permits this. I lived in Middlesex Borough for 25 years. I came home one day. A landlord with an apartment built next to me had a sump pump and a leader pipe right to my property. I called that construction official and it's gone the next day. Okay, so I, I have the five leader pipes. I also, at that time, I picked up a bucket, uh, excuse me, a whole house generator, okay? Three feet from my property line, okay? There's no codes on any of this. I bought this all of these things up to you people three years ago. So now, November 12th, we're talking about the tractor trailers. Very briefly, this is how my day started. I was woken up 4 a.m. by a tractor trailer circling in my neighborhood. Not for a warehouse in Amazon. It's for that, that show down in Bridgewater behind Baker and Taylor. There are multiple heavy rigging trucking outfits there. There was a loaded tractor trailer looking for a spot to sleep. My street. There's, you have on Main Street, you have no, to, uh, not to go down Adamsville, but all the side roads are four ton weight limits. From coming from 28, there's no four ton weight limits on 28. The one got run over, or there's one by the quick check maybe. But anyway, so my day started, I got woken up by this tractor trailer who ended up sleeping there. I called the police on him, but by the time they got there, he was gone. So that was 4 a.m., November 12th, 4 p.m. I have my neighbor's son with a hammer drill on the side of his house. What is he, of his mother's house. Now this house is less than nine feet from our property line. He has a hammer drill. He installed two sump pumps that discharge out of the side of that house. Our house sits 18 inches lower than the house next door. Our foundation is one course of block out of the ground, eight inches. I dug 31 holes to put the fence in. I have less than 18 inches of topsoil, then I have shale. So everything that comes out of that pump, if not for my little burn, comes to our property. I still get saturation. So that was November 12th. I have this thing, two of them, and he just put a stub shooting straight out, shooting out three feet. With all due respect, Mr. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to wrap it. I can't do it. Listen, I, well, if okay, you we called, we have called, it. We called the zoning official. It would be. I have a specific complaint. Talk to my administrator. I want to say, please finish. I'm going to call all the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 You people are really something. So, what can I do about this? Who can I speak to about this? Mr. Slinton, we'll take your call. How, and is this legal that a township official goes around telling other people they can flood other people's property? I know it's not legal. Now, now so how do you have eight people doing this? Now you're out of order, please. No, you're out of order because you're not letting the public speak. You won't even let me get to the point why I'm here. Well, I would suggest you- Because of five minutes when nobody else is here, you people are pathetic. And you're an embarrassment to this to everybody. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Yeah, have a nice life. No, thank you for coming. Hey, Granville, good on you. You didn't push the panic button this time and have a cop pace in the hallway like the last thing. Thank evening. you for coming. Have, have, have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Thank you're you. You're a bunch of crooks. Thank, thank you. you. Have a nice night. Any more public comment? Motion to close. So moved. Second. Council members, Granville Brady. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Vroom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Thank you for your patience, Council. Quite a few resolutions. Yes, we have a, a, a probably a world record of resolutions. Um, are there any that need individual discussion? Yes, I'd like to talk about 166. And we'll pick the one place. All right, uh, let's try to summarize these. 156, 
sale of surplus equipment at 2015 Ford Taurus. 157, a renewal of an Urban County Corporation Agreement. 158, landlord registration fee overpayment refund. 159, dedication by rider for dedication for revenue from the Community Garden Trust Fund. 160, salary adjustments for management and non-union employees for the current year. 162, dedication by rider for revenues to derived from the Environmental Trust Fund. 163, reservation of parking spaces on East Main for the um, naturalization ceremony and flag day event on June 17th. 164, approving the bed permit for the use of Carroll Pager Park on July 30th from 11 to 5. 165, another event permit for the Elks to use Carroll Pager Park on July 9th from 7 to 4. 167, approving Henry Cruz to be hired as a pool supervisor. 168, approving Julian Spivey to be hired as a lifeguard. 169, approving Rosario Torres to be hired as a pool supervisor. 170, appointing Elizabeth Kropka to serve on the Board of Health. 171, approving hiring Oscar Morello as a part-time laborer. 172, hiring Ashley Bowden as a full-time fire inspector slash property maintenance. 173, approving a cash management fund to serve as a guide in depositing and investing funds. 174, resolution of support authorizing the Sustainable Jersey Grant funded by PSE&G. 175, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute the first amendment to the airspace agreement between the borough of Somerville and Robert Wood Johnson. 176, memorializing the execution of a New Jersey Transit Temporary Access Permit to allow the installation of lighting and replacing the sidewalks on South Bridge Street. 177, accepting a PSE&G Foundation grant for $2,000. 178, authorizing the release of a performance bond for DGM 80 West Main Street, West Main, West End Avenue. 179, authorizing the release of a letter of credit for a maintenance guarantee on Block 115, Lot 17, no, also known as 21th Avenue, Port Street. 180, approving Jordan Todaro as a pool supervisor and lifeguard. 181, authorizing the administrator to offer employment to seasonal pool staff to enable training and employment hours for the summer. 182, rescinding a resolution authorizing the installation of two monitoring wells on Block 123, Lot 9, located on South Bridge Street. 183, approving Cole Russo to be hired as a lifeguard. 184, approving Christian Diaz to be hired as a lifeguard. 185, approving Chapter 159 for the State of New Jersey Sustainable Jersey Grant for the Community Guard. We have a motion on those resolutions. No move. Second. Kevin, before we go forward. I have to recuse myself, oh, forgive me, on um, 178. So one, 178, we're going to pull out a list. So we'll just record the vote. That yep. the same. Council members, Grandpa Brady? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Randy Strav, I'm sorry. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Verham? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. And then I will note on 178 that uh, Randy Pitts is Oh, sorry about that. All right. Now we have 161 approving the temporary installation of the little food pantry at various locations in some of our motion. So moved. Second. Tom, question? Yeah. Uh, not so much a question. I just wanted, wanted to. This is uh, this is a program they've done by uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Uh, and, uh, benefit for the hungry. People can leave food donations in these little pantries, and the uh, hungry can help themselves to them. I think it's a wonderful thing. And I just wanted to thank the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church for coming up with this idea. Okay, roll call. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Verm? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. 
Kevin, is the church going to handle the publicity, or do they want us to put it on our website? Um, I, I didn't engage in that conversation yet. Uh, when I'm there tomorrow for election, maybe I'll yeah. stop to see what they want to do. Okay. I, I think they do have the location, or at least the churches they talk to. I think it's important to get it out yeah. as well. Okay. And then the last one, 166, approving Colleen Ray Sweeney to be hired as a pool supervisor at the rate of $20 per hour from June 18th, 2022 to August 21, 2022. Motion. So I'll move. Second. Question. Actually, it's a comment that I've known Colleen for some time. She works at the YMCA. She's a lifeguard there. She's a manager at the YMCA. And uh, she represents, in spite of what some people might think, the best of Somerville. She's a lifelong, I believe, a lifelong resident. Her parents were neighbors of mine, Billy Gray and his wife. And the People in Somerville couldn't get a more competent person to watch out for their children. And this is the kind of, these are the kind of people we hire, and this is our policy, to hire people locally who are competent and who look out for the town. So I would very much support yeah. her. Yeah. I, I echo your sentiments. I've known her and I worked with her dad for many, many years. and. When I was looking to buy a home in Somerville, I, I, I talked to Vinny and said, you know, what's it like living and working in the same town? Mm -hmm. And he sold me on the town. I wanted, he walked west on the way home from school and I walked east. So it's, it's, it's again, it's as the students we recognized earlier tonight, it's the best of Somerville, continuing to contribute. All right, roll call. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Bob uh, Mitchell? Yes. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Broom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. All right. We're at bill, Bills and Vouchers. Right. So I make a motion to pay in the payment of $799,287.90 for Bills and Vouchers. I second that. Council members Granville Brady? Yes. Tom Mitchell? Yeah. Gina Stravick? Yes. Roger Vroom? Yes. Fred Weed? Yes. Randy Pitts? Yes. All right, before I call for adjournment, um, it's it's been our not so much tradition, but a, a, a sort of a precedent that we discuss canceling the second meeting in August. Um, Kevin, anything pressing that you are aware there of? There may be. So we have first of all the August schedule. The first meeting's on the first, and the second one's on the fifteenth, I believe. So it could cause a problem, but we do have a, currently we have an RFP out for, for uh, sanitary sewers, and which which may have to get awarded from one of those meetings. I'm in town. I think we should have a meeting, even if it's relatively short. We can leave it on the uh, agenda for now and... Uh, yeah, you'll know by the first. Well, no, yeah, we'll, we'll have a... I mean, it, it appears the first meeting we definitely have to have. Oh, sure. Um, but then it creates a whole month mm -hmm. because the next meeting is after Labor Day. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, it, it creates somewhat of a of a vendor payment issue mm -hmm. when we cancel meetings. I'm not crazy about the date after the 4th of July myself. That's a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just brought it up because we, we, you know, we've talked about it in the past. I didn't want to make a rash decision on the 1st of August. So. Uh, I, I know I will be away, so uh, Mr. Pitts, uh, you, you're forewarned now that you can't take vacation the, uh, on the 15th. Okay. Oh, well. Sorry. Yep. Okay. All right, with that, Mr. Mitchell? Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.